Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. So now, it's just another night in late night TV land. Stephen Colbert, our favorite silver haired satirist, is doing his thing, ready to chat with none other than Nancy Pelosi. You know, the former Speaker of the House, the woman who could probably stare down a grizzly bear without blinking. We're all settled in, popcorn at the ready, expecting some witty banter about the state of the nation. But hold on to your hats, folks, because this is where things go off the rails faster than a royal wedding planning committee. Enter stage left, Meghan Markle. Now, I know what you're thinking, but what's the Duchess of Desperation doing on Colbert? Well, let me tell you, it's not because she was invited. That's right, folks. Our favorite ex-royal decided to crash the party like it was a family wedding she didn't get an invite to. And let me tell you, the chaos that ensued was more entertaining than watching Prince Harry try to understand how a regular job works. So there's Colbert, trying to have a serious conversation with Pelosi about, I don't know, probably something trivial like the future of democracy or the economy. You know, just light, fluffy stuff. And then, out of nowhere, like a heat-seeking missile locked onto the nearest camera, Meghan Markle bursts onto the scene. Now, I've seen some awkward moments in my time. I've watched Prince Philip try to use modern slang. I've seen Prince Charles attempt to fist bump. But this, this took the cake, frosting and all. Meghan starts interrupting the conversation like she's auditioning for a role in Interrupting Cow, the musical. It's like she forgot she's not on the Oprah show anymore, where every word out of her mouth is treated like it's a long-lost Shakespeare sonnet. But here's where it gets good, folks. Colbert, bless his quick-witted soul, doesn't miss a beat. He looks at Megan, and with all the exasperation of a kindergarten teacher on the last day before summer break, he says, shut your mouth. I nearly fell off my chair. It was like watching your favorite uncle finally tell that annoying cousin to pipe down at Thanksgiving dinner. The audience went wild. I'm talking standing ovation, hooting and hollering. Probably a few marriage proposals thrown Colbert's way. It was beautiful, folks. Simply beautiful. Now let's break this down for a second. Meghan Markle, former actress, former royal, former relevant person, decides that what the world really needs right now is her input on whatever Pelosi and Colbert were discussing. Because clearly, her expertise on being a supporting character in a cable TV show and briefly being a royal makes her uniquely qualified to weigh in on matters of state. It's like she's playing the game of how can I make this about me? And let me tell you, she's going for the gold medal in that event. But Colbert, oh, Colbert wasn't having any of it. His shut your mouth wasn't just a request. It was a public service. It was like he was speaking for all of us who are tired of seeing Meghan try to insert herself into every conversation like she's a pop-up ad we can't close. And let's talk about the timing for a second. Nancy Pelosi, love her or hate her, is a political powerhouse. She's been in the game longer than some of us have been alive. She's faced down presidents, navigated political minefields, and probably knows more state secrets than James Bond. And Meghan thought this was the moment to jump in. It's like interrupting a masterclass to ask if anyone wants to hear about your high school drama club experience. But you know what? In a weird way, I almost feel bad for Meghan. Almost. It's clear she's desperate to stay relevant, to keep her name in the headlines. It's like watching a fish out of water, flopping around, gasping for air. If that fish was wearing designer clothes and had a team of PR people telling it to flop harder. And let's not forget about poor Harry in all this. Can you imagine what was going through his mind? He's probably sitting at home, watching this unfold, wondering if it's too late to ask Granny if that whole stepping back from royal duties thing was reversible. Spoiler alert, Harry, it's not. But here's the thing that really gets me. This incident, it's just a symptom of a bigger problem. We're living in an age where people think being famous is the same as being important. Where having a platform, no matter how you got it, means you should use it, even if you have nothing of value to say. Megan seems to have forgotten that respect isn't something you can demand or marry into, it's something you earn, and interrupting serious discussions about important issues, that's not how you earn it, honey. 
Now, I'm not saying Megan doesn't have the right to speak her mind. Of course she does. But there's a time and a place, and the middle of a conversation between a late-night host and a political leader. That ain't it, chief. But let's look at the bright side. This little incident gave us one of the greatest moments in late-night TV history. Shut Your Mouth is going to go down in the annals of classic TV moments, right up there with Socket to Me. And is this anything? And you know what? Maybe this is the wake-up call Megan needed. Maybe, just maybe, after being told to shut her mouth on national television, she'll realize that sometimes, the best thing you can do is sit back, listen, and wait for your turn to speak. But let's be real, folks. The chances of that happening are about as likely as the queen deciding to trade in her corgis for a pack of chihuahuas. So, what have we learned from all this? Well, for one, Stephen Colbert is an absolute legend. Two, even if you used to be a royal, you can't just barge into conversations like you own the place. And three, sometimes the most eloquent response to someone's interruption is a simple shut your mouth. In the end, this whole debacle is just another chapter in the ongoing saga of Meghan Markle's quest for relevance. It's like watching a reality show, but instead of a house full of strangers, it's just one person desperately trying to convince the world that she's still important. But you know what? In a weird way, I'm almost grateful for Meghan's interruption, because without it, we wouldn't have had this golden TV moment. We wouldn't have seen Colbert's masterclass in handling unexpected situations. And we wouldn't have had the joy of watching an entire audience collectively think, finally, someone said it. So, here's to you, Meghan Markle. Thanks for the laughs, even if they weren't intentional. Thanks for reminding us that sometimes the best thing we can do is shut our mouths. And thanks for giving us all a story we'll be chuckling about for years to come. And to Stephen Colbert. Sir, you've earned your place in the pantheon of late-night legends, your quick wit, your impeccable timing, and your ability to say what we're all thinking. It's a beautiful thing. Keep fighting the good fight, one shut your mouth at a time. As for the rest of us, well, we'll just have to tune in next time to see what shenanigans unfold. Will Megan try to crash another show? Will Harry start popping up in the background of weather reports? Only time will tell, folks. But one thing's for sure, in the unpredictable world of celebrity culture and late-night TV, there's never a dull moment. It's a wild ride, and we're all just along for the laughs. So there you have it, folks. The day Meghan Markle learned that sometimes the best thing you can say is nothing at all. It's a lesson we could all stand to remember from time to time. This has been your friendly neighborhood royal commentator, signing off. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. And hey, if you're ever tempted to interrupt someone important, just remember, WWCD, what would Colbert do? So stay tuned, my friends, because if there's one thing I've learned from watching the Royals, it's that the drama never stops, and neither do I. Until then, folks, thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Thank you.